beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed can I tell you why so many believers do not see the grace of God at work in their lives? The reason is because we, our convictions are not strong. We have not given priority to the things of the Spirit. We may be born again. We may even be filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen, it's one thing to be filled with the Holy Ghost. But it's another thing to submit to the influence of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Meditate on these things. The apostle said, I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things. Although ye already know them and are established in this present truth. In other words, once and again, the Holy Ghost will keep reminding us. It's not enough to keep learning and knowing new things. The Bible says ever learning, ever learning but never coming to the knowledge, the comprehension of the truth. There's nothing as frustrating as claiming to know many things and yet it does not translate into victory in your life. Hallelujah. It can be frustrating because a time will come your knowledge, listen, let me tell you, your knowledge only becomes useful when it is backed up with proofs. Are you getting my point? results strengthen your words they make people believe what you are saying when you keep speaking and after seasons and seasons of your life there is no proof of the efficacy of the word your word will not be highly esteemed in the ears of those who listen to you in the years to come by the grace of god we will still be teaching the same thing but it will be more powerful than it is now because there will be greater results back in the same word we are saying. See that? Years ago, we said some of these things. Maybe not to this degree, but it was the same conviction. It didn't look as strong as it is now because the evidences were not much. And over the years, there have been more evidences. And after 10 or 20 years, the, evidence, the evidences will be so much they said this is a notable miracle we cannot deny it hallelujah may your life become a testimony that jesus is alive may your life become a testimony that when people stay with the holy ghost he can make wonders out of their life may your life answer the question that people are asking you you don't need to respond just walk with the holy ghost and your life will write the answer hallelujah so pay attention pay attention to the word of god pay attention hallelujah the preacher said my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings 
do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart guard them like a treasure he says he says they are life not to christians but to those who find them and health to their flesh i believe the word of god i believe that he was not joking when he said verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me the works that i do he shall also do and greater works when he said that i believed him when he called me the head and not the tail i believed it lord let us believe in you cause us to believe in you let your convictions about god be very strong your conviction about God is a product of your revelation of Him. It's a resultant effect. Hallelujah. Bless be the name of the Lord. Tonight I trust God that we'll pray. I'm not so much teaching tonight. What, what I'm going to be doing tonight is what we call an admonition an encouragement a bracing up a reminder a recapping a restrengthening hallelujah because i don't want to just keep bringing so many revelations after revelations after revelations and then we do not see these things work in our lives i want i trust god and i pray this all the time that the word of God will prevail in our lives. Be it unto me according to your word. That's what Mary said. According to your promises I can stand secure carve upon my heart the truth that sets me free according to your word oh lord be it unto me be it unto me according to your word according to your promises I can stand secure Would you carve upon my heart The truth that sets me free According to your word, O oh Lord Be it unto me This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth it says but thou shalt meditate therein joshua chapter 1 verse 8 that thou mayest observe to do to do not to wish not to sing not to chorus not to argue to do all that is written therein and it says if you do it you will make your ways prosperous and you will have good success i believe this word i believe it has the ability to change my life i believe it is powerless if i ignore it i believe it is powerless if i refuse to act upon the truths that are there i believe it is powerless if i refuse to believe and pay attention to it but if i pay attention to it it will change my life. Hallelujah. Only you are holy. Only you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. For 
there's no one else like you who is faithful ever That you are receiving, that will be your song. It's a test. That if you take the principles of the word of God and you make up your mind, listen, listen, agreed that before now. You didn't have access to truth. Agreed that you were born poor. Agreed that you were born under yokes and curses and all forms of idolatry. Agreed that you were born under irresponsible parents. Agreed that you did not have the opportunity to get these truths on time. Agreed that you made a lot of mistakes and blundered and blunders in the past. Agreed. You may not be able to do anything about yesterday. But the Holy Spirit is still saying if you pay attention, you can still catch up. Hallelujah. You may not be able to do anything about yesterday. Some of us have made blunders out of our lives. Some of us have wasted opportunities. Some of us have allowed the devil to take advantage of a lot of things. Forget about that. See all your pain of yesterday as the school fees you have paid for ignorance but from today it is absolutely within your power to make up your mind and predict your future and the greatest way to predict your future is to create it the word of God is powerful but you will never understand the power that is in the word until you understand how it makes people powerful. The word of God does not make people powerful just by default. No. No. Hallelujah. Come, promise. Let me show you three things that the word of God does. It's an admonition tonight. Please pay attention. Let's call this guy a drunkard a smoker poor broke on his way to hell it is, it's just an example irresponsible call him anything womanizer whatever just name it watch this this brother is the way he is listen to me because there is an ideology are you getting what i'm saying there is a mindset that was enshrined in him 
either as a result of his past as a result of his background as a result of the influences around his life so he grew up with certain convictions and based on what he knew to be greatness he grew up seeing other people smoking and drinking and sleeping around and they felt like big boys and he was attracted to their proposal of what they call greatness and he permitted it to become part of his mindset are you getting what i'm saying now he never as he is right now from the example i'm giving you he doesn't know this gentleman he doesn't know that there are laws in this kingdom he does not know that life can be predictable he does not know that it is up to him and the holy ghost to birth the quality of his life he's waiting for mother nature he's waiting for situations wondering why nothing seems to work hi and then listen 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 jesus christ the word of god comes watch this when the word of god comes the first thing the word of god does is to reveal to him the inferiority of his current position because you will never change until you are dissatisfied with where you are why should i change if i'm okay with where i am are you getting what i'm saying so the holy ghost opens you up to a new horizon through the word and you see that life can be lived at another level that there can be a level of excellence beyond that which you have seen and so this brother sits under an anointing like this and listens to the word of god and the word of god begins to challenge him at first he will resist the word because the word of god will make him take responsibility for his current position and we hate taking responsibility that's why we love passing blames to demons is that true we love passing blames to spirit entities and say they are the reasons and now this brother is finding out that there can be a quality of life and by the way when he is alone after drinking and smoking and living life at a lower level the truth is that in his secret place there is a cry are you getting my point he wants a life higher and greater i've spoken to all kinds of people cultists smokers and the rest there is none of them that likes their current state it's just that they have become slaves to strongholds and ideologies and the word of god comes the word of god comes and after the first message this gentleman goes back with two ideologies the one he already has that says you can go back join those friends live your life say it does not matter allow anything and hope that one day things will get better or take responsibility and realize that the word of god can frame a new life and when he returns and sits sufficiently under the word of god something begins to change hallelujah he permits this mind to be in him that was in christ jesus all of a sudden the grace to adopt the new mindset that is consistent with the laws of the kingdom this gentleman now knows that it's not like god chose to make others rich and leave others poor that's what mommy told him that's what daddy told him very innocent but it's not true now he knows that wow i can partner with the holy spirit and there is an economic system to this kingdom hallelujah then he now knows that being a father is not all about getting a woman pregnant and having children you must be ready to take responsibility because you are building another future and he's receiving this and he's changing and while it is changing his friends begin to notice that he's dissatisfied with the mindset he used to advocate are you getting my point as a result they will become envoys of the lower mindset and they will try to lure him back to where he's trying to live using scornings criticisms and all of that they say we give you two weeks all this church thing you are doing you will come back 
and then they find out that he never returns brothers and sisters in three or four years this same guy will come back this is him transformed now he's understood that christianity is not all about going to church and just singing hymns and worship and choruses that it is a school it's a programming it proposes a new mindset the same mindset that makes heaven the way it is and when he receives it he will now return and meet those guys still there by that time the other brother is already 33 or 35 are you getting my point his eyes already stained with drinking for years his mouth everything his life his liver is almost dying and this brother comes changed everything around him is changed you can choose to remain where you are you can choose to keep coming for koinonia and enjoy the euphoria of participating in an apostolic activity that God is doing in a territory you can choose or you can make up your mind and say Lord every time I come to your presence I realize that there are two mindsets that war in me and when I come I am ready to let my own ideologies die it was because I believed them look at the way they made my life I believed that sickness was the will of God a mindset I believed that my genotype would never change I believed that I can just die any day anyhow it's like that it happens if it comes give glory to God but when the word of God comes it begins to propose to you a new ideology it tells you life can be lived at another level Whereas you were depending on everybody. You've heard of all those kinds of things. And you, you are always hoping that people become successful. And then when they come, say, bros, anything. That's a mindset. And all of a sudden, the word of God calls you into a place where you realize that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And your mindset changes lay your hands upon your head and pray in one minute and say i allow my mindset to change go ahead pray before your presence came and changed me pray lay your hands upon your head and pray and say lord this mindset must change it must change I receive the mindset because I grew up in poverty because I grew up in idol worship but right now it must change it must change I receive the mindset as a result of my denomination but it must change my mindset about finances must change my mindset about my life must change my mindset about the Holy Ghost must change. My mindset about the body of Christ must change. My mindset about my future must change. My mindset about my academics must change. My mindset about marriage must change. My mindset about purity and holiness must change. My mindset about long life, it must change. I insist it must change. I insist it must change I insist it must change hallelujah listen listen all that needs to change in your life is your mindset the Bible says they limited God in the wilderness a man can limit God a man can limit God. Please bring this for me. Bring both of them in. If, if this is your mindset, watch this. If this is your mindset, this is all your ideology. And 
point. point. This is all you can receive of God because that's all your mindset has allowed. Whereas there is so much. So based on your mindset, this is all of God. Whereas there is still a lot more. Are you getting my point? If you will allow your mindset to expand, the Bible says, and when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped flowing. When the woman sat around and she said, this is all I have. God said, Todd, this is the limit to which I can bless you. If you brought more vessels, it would have continued. He says, go and borrow vessels, borrow not a few. And when she got to the limit of how much she believed, God said, well, this is it. If you give God a spoon, he will fill it. If you give him a teacup, he will fill it. If you give him a gallon, he will fill it. If you give him a jerry can, he will fill it. If you give him a drum, he will fill it. If you give God your space to walk in your mindset as regards success and your academics, he will help you there. But you will never see his hand in another area. If you give God opportunity to influence your ideologies as regards divine healing, he will stop there. You will excel as far as your health is concerned, but you will fail in other areas because they are keys. And I will give you not a key, the keys, 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 keys open different doors. So that you are excelling in one aspect of your Christian life should not make you complacent. There are other areas. The Bible says, Genesis 24 verse 1, and Abraham was old and well stricken and God had blessed him in all things. The Bible talks about a man called Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. Hallelujah. When you read from 2 Kings, I think, chapter 5, it talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a great man. He understood the principles of war. But, as far as living in divine health was concerned, there was an issue there. Thank God for the areas you have gotten. Turn right now and focus on the areas where the word of God. This is how, listen, when I check areas of darkness in my life, I attack it like I attack the devil. Hallelujah. Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. Thank God for what I now know, but there is more. And I contend to bring light in every area of my life. And then at that point, there will be nothing short of beauty and glory from your life. The first question God is asking you tonight is how much of the light of God have you allowed? Some of us have mastered the laws of God as far as living in divine health is concerned. But some of us have refused to master the kingdom principles that bring wealth and prosperity. You are just not interested. Some of us have mastered prosperity but we've not mastered longevity. You must be able to come to a point it's a school the same way you take several courses you can't just take one and the word of god will pass you through a system of renewal and you will come out brand new and then everything around your life will begin to relate to you at the higher level that your mindset has adjusted to you don't need to change people you just need to change and everything around you will also change sometimes we believe when we change everybody around us then we will change not so not so hallelujah Bless you. so you must allow the mind of god to change you if i ask you today and i say ken can you come and hold the mic and share with the house share with us in five minutes what are the kingdom principles you have learned as far as living in divine health is concerned you have been attending koinonia for a while come and share with the house if you cannot share with the house that means something is wrong is that true if i i call this lady come i won't don't worry don't don't feel come 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 come, come. i won't embarrass you i'm not 90 years old i'm a young man praise god 
if I call this lady now and I say, sweetheart, in five minutes, talk to the sisters about the two or three major keys you think will make them virtuous women. I don't expect you to stand and say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you, you know, no. That means whatever you cannot teach, you do not understand it. You may be aware. That's how many of us read. And you find out that when you are in the exam hall, you say, I know it, but it can't come out because it's still in the realm of awareness. You see that? There are three levels of understanding or three levels of gaining knowledge. The first is awareness. The second is understanding. The third is mastery. If you study like that, you will do well. Many of us read and you know that what you've read is there scattered like, like a software somewhere in your head. And then when you see the questions, you know, you are saying, ah, bros, is it not what we reverse? It's not the issue. It can't come out because it has not entered the second phase, understanding. You see that? And the best of the best of the best in the kingdom are not just those who have understood, but they have mastered what they understand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say, I refuse to be a failure. Say it. I refuse to be a failure. It's not just by willpower. It's by subscribing to the terms of the word of God. You must honor this word. You, I don't just want to say word, 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 word. You know, we keep saying, get the word. But the truth is, for years, I didn't understand what people were saying. I didn't understand what they were calling that word. What is it? Is it the verse? Because they say, get the word. And I was wondering, what is this Bible is plenty. So what is the word? <laughs> Everything. I know people who know it off heart. And it has not changed their lives. Whenever you hear me say the word of God, I mean the accurate revelation of the principles of the kingdom. That's what I call the word of God. Not these vague things. People just say, get the word to mean just read scriptures. No, the accurate revealed word. The Bible says when he broke the bread, not when he held the bread. When he held it, they were still blind. But when the bread was broken, their eyes were open. Until the bread is broken, it cannot bless you. It was when he broke the bread and gave thanks that he began to multiply, to produce in their lives. Hallelujah. Throughout this year, so far, this is, this is the ninth month by the grace of God. And by God's grace, I have taught on several things. My goal for the year, when I was having my retreat for the year, I told the Lord to grant me an opportunity to minimize my travels, especially on Fridays. So that I will be around and available. I was talking to someone and I was telling him, if God gives you a walk and you later leave that walk because of international ministry, you are traveling around, blessing the whole world and you forget about your core assignment, you are, you are still a failure. Have you seen some parents who allow their wives and children, they can donate one million during a fundraising? Have you seen that kind of thing? And yet, they've not even paid the school fees of their children. No. Responsibility is to focus. Don't say, my bad. I'm not asking you to point people. Praise the Lord. So my focus, my, my goal, because the Lord told us that this is the year of light and dominion. Dominion that comes as a resultant effect of illumination. It's not just, I, I'm walking in dominion. No. Hallelujah. It's not just I'm walking in dominion. It's that there is an understanding. And I hope that we are learning something. I Look, some of you who are pastors here, or many of us that God will trust with ministries, don't deceive God's people. Don't stand on stage and waste their time telling the amount of the shoe you bought or this and that. Wonderful. You can bring in little jokes here and there. But you must make sure the same way a student is taught in school 
is the same way a Christian becomes an ambassador. Are you getting my point? No matter how complicated my teachings are, if you don't understand it to act upon it, I have not edified you. Hallelujah. That's why we try to make the word of God as simple as possible. So that we, my goal is not to say, wow, this is a man of God. Joshua Selman has revelation. My goal is that you understand the principles. How many of you have seen some lecturers that are very intelligent but they can't teach? Have you seen people like that? You know they are exceptionally intelligent. But when they enter the class, you almost have a headache because you know you are in for it. They are intelligent, but they cannot explain their conviction to the understanding of the students. And you find students failing their course, not because the students are dull, but the capacity to transfer that knowledge to the students. But there are other lecturers when you see them, you are excited because they know how to make you understand their convictions. They can use stories, they can use jokes. Preachers, pastors, listen to me. Teach your congregation. Don't wow them with revelations. Teach them. Make them come into a comprehension. There are very little children here. There are old people here. There are young people here. When Jesus taught, although his teachings were hard, they were not hard because, they were hard because the power for the, the, the position it puts the people and the change they would, they would need to make as a result of that teaching was very difficult. Not because the teachings were so hard in that they could not be understood. He used parables. He used a lot of things. Hallelujah. Are you understanding the word of God? Are you understanding it? I taught, I've, I've taught, I think for, for years now, there are very few aspects of the kingdom life by the grace of God that I have not touched. We've touched on marriage. We've taught on, on, on finances. We've taught on leadership. We've taught on success. We've taught on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We've taught on demonology and deliverance. Different aspects of the kingdom life why because god wants to equip us not just that you are prosperous and that you do not know how to stand against the wiles of the enemy not just that you are sitting concentrating on demons and you do not know that there is an agenda to, to be fulfilled not just that you are praying in tongues and you are not relevant to your corporate world are you getting what i'm saying there are many people who pray in tongues but you employ them they will waste your money and waste your time and drown your work. But they are Christians. When it is 12 o'clock in your place of work and you say lead prayers, you will feel like you should just keep praying till evening. But when it comes to principles that bring productivity, they do not know, they don't care. And that, that faulty mindset comes from we preachers. That faulty mindset comes from the preachers. Hallelujah. We take our limitations and transfer it to the people. So if I am serious about praying in tongues and walking with the Holy Ghost, but I have not been concerned about leadership, I teach the congregation that is not necessary. Is that not true? I just tell them, focus on the Holy Ghost and your life will change. And so you will see an amazing church with the power of God, but there's no excellence. There's no excellence. You see that? Then there are people who is all about leadership and corporate governance and how to do it and principles of church governance and church accounting. Wonderful. But when it comes to the ministry of the Holy Ghost, they kick it out. Everything is intellectual. So you have an excellent church. And they run the church like, 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 like a CEO running his conglomerate. But the Holy Ghost is not there. They are too organized. God cannot find expression. Not for five minutes. If this guy is supposed to sing for five minutes. And for any reason. 
God just feels like extending his grace and his power upon the people is in trouble. No matter where they are, they must come down for the service to continue. Hallelujah. Then there are people who are not serious. They won't go for work on Monday, Tuesday. They won't apply for work. They'll say, I know my God is faithful. I can get jobs without, without application because of one or two testimonies that have come. Hallelujah. And they sit down at home. The children are getting sick. The wife is getting angry. There is no testimony of the grace of God there. Monday they are in church. Tuesday they are in church. Wednesday they are in church. And I mean from morning to evening. Thursday they are in church. Friday they are in church. Saturday they are in church. And the wife has one small shop that the man is eating everything there because he has not been taught that if you delay gratification, it can bless you. And they don't care. So although they are praying, they are fasting, but they are not rightly dividing the world. And so as a result, there are dimensions of God they will not experience. Every time they go to church, they will fall down. I guarantee you, they will see visions. They will prophesy to you but they will not be relevant to the corporate world. Therefore, we must be built. Remember the teaching, the full gospel. We must be built holistically. And this is what, by the grace of God. Not everybody. See, there are preachers, the way they preach, if you don't plan to be a preacher, their ministry is useless to you. Are you getting my point? And it's not accurate. Because you now turn a CEO to become a man of God. And he finds out that he's struggling. And you say is that he's not spiritual enough. Whereas you are bringing him out of his grace into something else. So in many churches, the hallmark of spirituality is when you become a pastor. So CEOs, leaders, bankers, all envision times when they will become pastors. Ladies look forward to the pastors. A brother comes, they say, Who are you? He says, Well, I'm, I'm a brother, one partner. He says, Please go away. I'm not preparing my life for any kind of anyhow person because a mindset has been given that if if you are excellent and the preacher approves of you, he will stamp you by making you a pastor. But the kingdom is not like that. Our concept of the gospel. It's not just going to tell somebody Jesus is coming, which is a, an important component of the gospel. But it says, go ye into all cosmos. 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 I've said it again, that the gospel is not just a message. The gospel is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his value system above a system that does not honor him. So if you embrace the gospel, it should do certain things. It should save you it should prepare you it should empower you and it should release you strategically to be relevant hallelujah so that we now teach people that not everybody is going to be in the fivefold ministry and that the dimensions of the fivefold ministry does not end in the pulpit are you getting my point so when you find out that there is a desire for you to go into finances and be a CEO, you do not see it as being less spiritual than an apostle or a prophet who is standing on stage. Are you getting my point now? We have been taught that these things are of lesser value. They are not. Because by and large, the preacher will find out that the gospel is free, but the means to carry it is not free. Hallelujah. There are many men of God that have powerful messages to give but they are broke they are on air and they can only pay for 10 minutes while they are about sharing a powerful revelation they just cut it program over that's the limit of your money and when we ignore the ministry of kingdom financiers we can have all the encounters of the spirit but it will not be relevant are you getting my point now there needs to be people in the area of governance who can stand and advocate the confab just finished right now and i was so happy because the advocates that was were there to represent the kingdom are thorough men men of both intelligence and men of spirituality so i was very comfortable 
because I knew that the constitution of this country will be altered for the glory of God. But assuming there were all these kinds of people who don't pay attention, you go to a confab now, you sit down, you are praying in tongues and you don't know anything about the history of your nation and they ask you a question and as a stakeholder representing the body of Christ and you disgrace us there and say something, you say, oh, the Lord told me, they don't know this. They don't know this. Daniel, Daniel in the Bible was a man who showed us how you can combine spirituality and governance. And through the dispensation of three kings, he reigned and he could not be rejected. Are you understanding the gospel now? This is the gospel. And like, like Azuka was saying, now you see, with his spirituality and his understanding, he's going into the area of the media because he understands there is a mountain there. Praise the Lord. When they are kicking God and everything that is of God out of the media and we are here shouting and praying in tongues, there's got to be men of power and fire that will get up there supported by kingdom financiers and prayer warriors but they will go. They will be able to translate the ideologies of the kingdom to transform society. If your knowledge of God cannot transform society, it is a waste. That's what John Wesley said. If your knowledge of God, your knowledge of God must sustain the ability. Listen, 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 listen. If I plant a church in a region and after five years, the community does not see the relevance of the gospel, I'm wasting their time. Is that true? Believers, unbelievers and everyone should attest to the fact that there are a people with a mindset. So with time, they see that there are miracles happening. Supernatural acts of God. But then they see that with time, a school is built for that community. And after five years, children who would not have the opportunity to go to school, now go to school. And you build the school and introduce new curriculums. You know, I've, I've, I've told the workers, by the time God permits us to start building our schools, there are three courses we are going to add. You must write it from Genesis 1 to SS3. Number one is called spiritual growth. Number two, financial education. Number three, I don't know what the name is. You must do it from beginning till you finish. We are not just going to teach social studies and, 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 uh, 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 and uh, biology and all of those kinds of things. Elementary science. Thank God for those things. We must educate the people. So that our children are relevant to society and still sustain the values of the kingdom. Listen, I'm teaching you how to transform society, not just how to build your ministry, how to make your ministry relevant. There are many of us by the grace of God. The reason why our parents are glad that we are coming here is not just because of praying in tongues. They are seeing our ideologies change something is changing about your life you are adopting value systems that are attractive when we become agents of change by introducing a mindset that can affect society then they will listen to our gospel hallelujah but for as long as the church keep behaving like fools on stage people just come and they see us bouncing and praying <laughs> And the moment we finish everywhere is rowdy rowdy there's there's all kinds of disorganization no system for honor no system to build people there is no structure you don't behave like that because many many pastors and many ministers we have not been told that we are also agents of change in the institution you see that we, we, are not, we are not told that our relevance transcends just spirituality. We have not yet seen ourselves as agents of change to society. May God make every one of us here an agent of change. In the name of Jesus Christ. That with your understanding of the kingdom, you will build schools. You will build roads. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not just that you will heal the sick and cast out devils, but that your understanding of the kingdom will be able to translate into something that society cannot refuse. Hallelujah.
That's what was happening. We must build people. We must build people. Sunday Adelaja, one great man I, ad I admire so much. He led the orange revolution in Ukraine. Ukraine is a communist nation even till today. But that man, not very eloquent in speech, Sunday Adelaja was able to go to Ukraine and he, he understood the kingdom and he put the kingdom to the test and he brought the government to its knees. He showed how governance and the apostolic ministry, he raised a people. He was a great man, but he was broke. And he sat down and studied the principles of the kingdom and in six months he became a multi-millionaire in dollars. And in two years he raised 200 multi-millionaires in his church from the scratch, from nothing. You think the government will not? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. There is a level of relevance that you can command that even if you are not the firstborn in your family, you don't need to steal any birthright. Wisdom and influence will give it to you. Whoever can bring anything on the table is the one who speaks. If you can't bring anything on the table, you cannot speak any kind of story. Whoever can bring anything on the table that you are praying and the moment you finish praying, that prayer translates into wisdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom is the ability to know God's perspective about everything in life. Tell me what can I do? I can live without you. I can live without. So tell me what can I do? I can live without you. Hallelujah. Say the word of God is changing me. Brothers and sisters, I have a guarantee. You will be so successful, it will shock you. No, I'm telling you. The word of God is making you become something you cannot even stop. Hallelujah. The word of God. I know people here by the grace of God who were either of the other faith or came here with all kinds of mindsets. And I am amazed. I'm amazed to see what God is doing and we give him all the glory and by the grace of God days will come we will celebrate greatness at another level if you are interested join us there if you get there you don't find me you've not arrived there a day will come we will celebrate greatness at that level yes some of you will just go to your village and count the local government there and say please this land build churches this is the budget for the kingdom this is the one to sustain the pastors for the next five years let me know when it gets to three years and it's as if you just gave money for a recharge card because you have gotten the knowledge of the kingdom see see let me tell you something maybe let me digress this is an, admi an admonition are you getting blessed tonight listen do you know i was sharing with someone yesterday if all the wealth of the world you know there are people who are angry today they are saying if they distributed money it would have reached all of us in nigeria let me tell you something distribute the money in nigeria equally to everybody if you are pregnant you will get for you and your baby i guarantee you in 24 hours it will return back from where it came from because there is a there is a mindset the poor people will do the same foolish things they've been doing although they are spiritual and then it will leave them but the gift of a man the gift of a man the gift of a man by now you know that you have something all your life you've been told you are nothing they call you a lodo and you, at a point you even answer it yourself you believe it but the word of god lets you know that the gift of a man say i have something say it i have something that the world cannot reject i have something I have an ability I have an anointing I have grace I have wisdom I have insight I have intelligence 
the world cannot reject it and they will pay you for it they will pay you in ways that will surprise you you will see it happen brothers and sisters my bible tells me that if the cloud be full of rain hold on you are not seeing anything now but it doesn't mean any nothing is happening Even the devil is a witness that you deserve to be blessed. Even the devil, he's watching your commitment. He knows he's a witness. Satan ran to God and said, Kai, this Job's issue. God said, have you considered my servant Job? Satan said, I tried, I tried. We will feed nations. We will feed nations. Some of you will set up publishing firms that produce the Bible in any language. Any. See, this is kingdom advancement. Kingdom advancement is not just intercession. Kingdom advancement is getting up to confront the gates of hell. And there are tools that help us to confront those gates. Number one, the anointing. Number two, wisdom number three excellence number four prosperity these are all the tools that will empower us to confront the gates hallelujah praise the lord this is what god is making out of your life this is what god is making out of your life but the question i want to ask you before we continue is that are you paying attention to what God is doing in your life because I don't want to assume all of us are paying attention there are some of us as you are hearing this thing you're just rejoicing because you're part of the crowd but you know that if it's to be one-on-one -on -one, you and God you're not doing anything you don't even believe what we are saying it looks like we're just gyrating the beautiful thing about success is that it is an individual affair you can choose to believe it or not if you don't believe it will take care of you in the future but if you believe it together will do great things for the kingdom hallelujah praise the lord that the lord will be able to use me to do anything he wants to do that when god wants to bless people financially i can be available that when god wants to heal the sick i can be available when God wants to transmit the knowledge of the kingdom, I can be available. This is my prayer. I'm not just, I don't just want to be relevant in terms of preaching. So if there is no sermon to preach, I cannot do anything for the kingdom again. No, sir. No, sir. Jesus was relevant when he spoke with the scribes and all of those people. He spoke intelligently. When he spoke with tax collectors, he spoke intelligently. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are four dimensions that we must all operate to see the fullness of God in our lives. Lord, if you're healing someone in this city, please don't do it without me. Just bring out your notebooks. Don't do it without me. That's always my prayer to you. Lord, if you're using great men in this nation, please don't do it without me. Oh, I'm available. Don't do it without me. Before I teach on these four aspects, can you pray? Pray and say, Lord, whatever you are doing, I'm available. Don't do it without me. If you're looking for prayer warriors i'm available if you're looking for financial apostles i'm available you're looking for career people who will do great things for the kingdom i'm available those of us outside make sure you are praying the lord is hearing you lord if you're looking for intellectuals men who can combine wisdom and intelligence with spirituality i'm available I'm available. I'm available. I'm an agent of change. I'm an agent of national transformation. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look up. Revelations tells us that at the throne of God Almighty and the Lamb, Jesus Christ, there are four living creatures. Four living creatures that are before the throne. And it tells us the first living creature has the face of a lion. Hallelujah. The second living creature has the face of a calf or an ox. The third living creature has the face of a man. And the fourth living creature has the face of a flying eagle. And now realize that everything in heaven is a reflection of who God is. Everything in heaven. Hallelujah. Everything. The construction of the tabernacle from the court of the temple right to the most holy place. Everything speaks about dimensions of God. So it is in heaven. All of the things in heaven attempt to describe the majesty and the glory of God. So the four living creatures are four major dimensions that every believer who wants to reflect the image of Christ in his fullness must be able to walk in. Number one is the face of the lion. The lion is an animal that is known for strength, attitude, courage, dominion. The face of the lion talks about the dimension of your Christian experience. Where you must walk in dominion and authority. God wants that in a bit to reflect his glory. You must be able to demonstrate the authority of the kingdom. You must be able to walk as a king. Revelations 5 verse 10. It says we have been made unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign, reign, reign. Hallelujah. Bible says those of us who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness he said we shall reign in this life hallelujah say I am royalty everyone say it, I am royalty yes this is a dimension of God that he wants you to reflect because he is a king the royal one and he wants you to walk in that authority the centurion said to Jesus and he got Jesus interested. He said, for I am a man under authority. Aha. Uh -huh. Authority. And by reason of being under the authority of the government of Rome, I can tell one, go, and he will go. And I can tell the other, come, and he will come. And Jesus said, I have not found such a faith. In other words, I have not found such a mindset and a perspective of the kingdom. No, not in Israel. Although this guy is not part of the commonwealth of Israel, I am seeing him manifest an understanding that belongs to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Everybody say authority. If you are not walking in authority, there is a dimension of the kingdom experience you are not revealing. You must walk in authority. Authority. There is a difference between authority and power. Power is the force that produces change. Power is the force that produces change. Authority is the legal right to legislate. The legal right to legislate. So good luck can say tomorrow is public holiday. That's not power. That's authority. The police officers and the soldiers don't have authority but they have power. So they can carry their guns and they can carry their koboko. They enforce compliance. Hallelujah. The beautiful thing is that we have authority and there is an anointing put in us. It's called dunamis. Hallelujah. Is the power of the Holy Ghost that enforces compliance. That's why it is released as we speak. So Elijah, the book of James tells us, was a man of like passion. And he prayed earnestly that there be no rain for a space of three and a half years. And while he prayed, there was an energy of the Spirit that compelled the territory to comply. Say, I have authority. 
Say it. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give you authority. The Greek word is exousia. Exousia. I give you the capacity. is delegated power. The ability to stand in the stead of another. That means the ability to walk in the shoes of another. Move in my office. When Jesus gave us his name, he gave us his authority. The name of a man represents his office, his identity. That's why they asked the man, they said, Peter, I mean, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but who are you? Where is your office? Hallelujah. When Jesus sent the, tw the, the 12, and also when he sent the 70, the Bible says they all returned rejoicing, and he asked them a question. He said, when I sent you, not when you went on your own, when I sent you, lackest thou any? when i sent you everybody say i'm sent comes from the greek word apostolos titus 1 verse 1 the highest envoys of the king so the king brings them and trains them hallelujah prepares them teaches them his ideologies and he sends them to go and colonize a country on his behalf comes from the greek word apostolos the envoys of the king that's where you get the word apostle and that's where you get the word ambassador envoys that are sent everybody say i'm sent say it i am sent the bible says as my father has sent me so send i you do you believe it so say i'm sent with the backing of heaven say it i am sent with the backing of heaven the bible says in matthew chapter 5 jesus teaching on the mount what we call the beatitudes or the constitution the unveiling of the constitution of the kingdom he says ye are the light not of your church not of your denomination you are the light you give illumination light of the world he said you are a city not like a city you are literally a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hidden and he says neither do men light a candle a lampstand a lampstand and put it under a bushel it's of no use if you are a lampstand because you are revelations chapter one the bible begins to tell us how that john saw he turned and he saw seven lampstands and those lampstands represent the catholic church the word catholic is the word the universal church the church of the firstborn the church that has no ministry name represented in the seven lampstands and he said in the midst of the lampstands i saw one so god is always in the midst of his people he said in the midst of the lampstand i saw one like the son of man and he began to describe a lot of things hallelujah so say i have dominion how does that dominion become a reality through the revelation of the word of God in you I told you dominion is not an impartation dominion is not something you claim it's not something you jack yourself into some spooky feelings dominion is a byproduct of knowledge knowledge and understanding Psalm 82 verse 5 they know not neither do they understand and so they walk in darkness and the earth is out of course verse 6 have I not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he said but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes hallelujah very important you must realize that you have dominion but that dominion is there potentially as you begin to access the light of god's word it puts you in a position where you can walk in that dominion experientially hallelujah i have dominion over principalities over powers over thrones over every name that is named and my dominion is exercised on the strength of my understanding of the way the realm of the spirit works and so i can tell this demon spirit stay and go and when he looks he will see the foundation upon which that statement comes and he knows that i'm not just making empty noise hallelujah because every time i speak to that spirit and i say go there are many scriptures that support my conviction 
the bible talks about the angels who excel in light and excel in strength who confirms the words of his messengers and i am sent because i am a messenger so when i speak i expect the backing of heaven so don't just speak there must be revelations that sponsor your confidence if i if i turn to Folake and i say be healed what is the revelation that backs up this that i've said if there is nothing she will not be healed hallelujah so as i stand i remember that the spirit that raised christ from the dead dwells in me i remember that i've been authorized the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth acts 10 38 with the holy ghost and with power and the bible says he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed not all day that were sick so every sickness is an oppression so when i tell her be healed i know that it's an oppression hallelujah hallelujah and when i speak and i say be free there is an anointing that leaves me and i understand from isaiah 10 27 that that anointing breaks yokes it takes away burdens when i prophesy and i say in the name of jesus let a new season be open unto you i understand that the bible says to appoint unto them that mourn to appoint you know what it means to appoint to set a date for their liberty dominion you must learn to walk in dominion to exercise your authority and frankly speaking the church has made progress there we have done a lot helping believers to understand what we call their identity in Christ which is very important that I am seated with Christ I'm above sickness I'm above poverty I'm above failure I'm above defeat I'm not a non-entity dominion all the aspects of our kingly dimension but the trouble is that sometimes when if all you see in your Christian experience is just that face of a lion you will get into pride and arrogance and you will never serve the king it will make you self-centered because you will think it's about you you know that when king's reign is all about them is that true every kingdom operates on a monarchy system and monarchy is about the king not the king and many people a monarchy is not a democracy nobody votes the king so when you have the understanding of your kingly dimension there is a disclaimer there because you may be tempted to think that all jesus did was all about you and you alone so god introduces you to the next dimension the face of a calf which speaks of sacrifice and servanthood so he helps you know that you are a king you have dominion but it does not stop there and if you stop there you will not reflect the image of the christ in its entirety so we have a lot of people hallelujah i have dominion and they have the jeeps they have everything they have all of these things but they are not relevant as far as the kingdom is concerned they are not doing anything for god it's all about me i received an alert yesterday i did this and that me me myself i am reigning hallelujah i'm going from glory to glory and god says when will it stop being about you and turn to become that of the kingdom so he introduces you to the face of a calf or an ox in bible days an ox or a calf was the animal that was used to plot the land that's why the bible says do not muzzle the ox that treads upon the corn so they use ox oxes and and wild animals all of those things to be able to thresh the land it says the field is wide but the laborers are few he said pray or the lord of the harvest pray that he will send laborers when it comes to working for god you are not a son you are a servant you see that you must understand that dimension when it comes to service in the kingdom you no longer talk about sonship as it were no you talk about servanthood so paul can say paul a bond servant paul a bond servant because he spent his entire life and went all across Asia Minor and went trying to advocate the ideologies and the counsel and the principles of the kingdom. 
Everybody say, I'm a king. I'm royalty. But I'm also a servant. You must be able to know this. When you realize that you are a servant, when you are doing your intercessory ministry, you can do it sincerely. So you can fast and pray for two or three days and not mention anything about yourself because you realize that you are a servant. Are you getting my point now? You are a servant. A servant is a property. That is a dimension you must know about God. Thank God for being one with Christ. But if that's all you know about his image, you are not reflecting him properly. You must get to a point where you know that the same Bible that says we are seated with Christ said we have been bought with a price. Know ye not that your body has become the temple of another. So that, that revelation of a calf brings you to a point where you can lay down your life. You can do anything for the kingdom as far as service is concerned. So your money can go for the kingdom. So you can inconvenience yourself for the kingdom. As a man of God, you go for a meeting and there's no AC there and it's a bike that will drive you, that will, that will, that will ride you to the place and you don't sit there and say, with my status, I'm a king. Come on now. Uh-uh. You're a king, but you're a servant. Is that true? And that although you love the Lord, you are not afraid of service. Everybody say, I'm a servant. Say it, I'm a servant. I live to serve the king. Say it, I live to serve his purposes. I live to serve the king. I live to serve his purposes. It's not enough to know that you have dominion. It's not enough to know that you are a king. You must know that you live to serve the purposes of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me so whatever inconvenience it may bring to you you are willing to go through it Paul said so then death works in us that life will work in you although you are a king although you are royalty if it takes cleaning the house of God you can do it as a millionaire CEO and you know that I am a servant, a born servant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Celebrate John Christ. Good to see him. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm a servant. Say it, I'm a servant. It's not enough to know that you are king, you have dominion. You must realize that the purposes of the kingdom will only be executed when you become a servant. And can I tell you something? When you take up the posture of a servant, your gift for being a servant is access to light and revelations. Revelations 1 verse 1. The Bible says the revelation of Jesus which he showed unto John his servant. You must be a servant to access that revelation. In Joshua chapter 1, God speaking to Joshua said, Moses, my servant is dead. Although Moses commanded authority, he demonstrated dominion. But he died a servant. This is a dimension of the image of God that you must reflect. It's not enough to have dominion. It's not enough to know you are one with Christ. You must realize that you are a servant. Everybody say, I'm a servant. Preacher, you are a servant. As a worker in the house of God, you know that you don't just come and carry your status and say i'm a great man no you serve you serve hallelujah and then the truth is sometimes as an ox when you serve you get to a point where people can break you down is that true the bible says don't muzzle the ox the ox can be hungry there are some times, have you, have you seen how certain donkeys get tired and even fall? Because they stretch them. 
and so he introduces you to the third dimension the face of a man your humanity is also a reflection of the image of the Christ that in as much as you realize that you are you have authority you are invincible and in as much as you have adopted the purposes of the kingdom and you have pledged your life don't forget that that is not all there is to reflecting the fullness of the image of the Christ and the third face was the face of the man notice the progression the face of the man why the face of the man because there are times you must you must permit your humanity to play when you are trying to reflect Christ it is not spirituality to hide your humanity so you see Jesus revealing his humanity he was hungry Jesus was hungry you will not be fasting every day of your life you are a human being Jesus was hungry Jesus wept Jesus was heartbroken so when you find yourself crying someone died and you're crying and someone said come on man up square up no no allow your tears it's not a symbol of weakness there is a dimension of God that permits that operation hallelujah so Jesus hears that Lazarus his brother is dead and Jesus goes to the tomb and the Bible says and Jesus wept John 11 the 35th chapter and Jesus wept he said we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity the word infirmity is there is the word limitation not sickness limitation hallelujah all through scripture you see God using imperfect man as a, as, an, as a system, not as a human being. Man, if you describe man as a system, man is flawed. That's why in the making of the bread, he said, add a little leaven. Because leaven stands for imperfection. He said, add it. Although it will be used in my temple, add it. The beautiful thing about God is that he does not wait for you to be perfect before he uses you. He can be building you on the go. Hallelujah. See, all the people that God used in scripture, they were not perfect people. From murderers like Moses to womanizers and killers like David to temperous people like Moses, idol worshippers like Abraham, angry people like Elijah, emotional people like Ezekiel. Hallelujah. erratic people like Peter unstable people like Thomas hallelujah yet in the midst of their imperfections his purposes still came to pass this is what makes him mighty the ability to birth his purposes in spite of your limitation everybody say I'm human say I'm human the man that pioneered the Welsh revival the man that pioneered the Welsh revival died not because it was his time he died because he understood that he had dominion and he knew that he was a servant serving the king but he forgot that he was a human being it was said he literally walked himself to death because he believed that if he did not frontier the revival it would be corrupted so based on his fear of the revival being corrupted and then the corruption now attributed to him he took his humanity I mean he forgot about his humanity and he died do you know there are many geos and great men that died before their time because they want to win the whole world they have over 30 or 40 ministrations in a week flying all around and they are tired I used to be like that until the day God gave me this revelation I literally killed myself because I believed that I didn't want to fail God there are times that I would pray for hours I would spend time and then when I'm about to go and rest somebody will now send me a text that's where the person has finished sleeping wipe sleep from his eyes and they will they will say very very attractive things like God sent you to us and you know I'll feel that burden of ministry now uh -huh. when I finish praying 
if your text come if the one who created the heavens and the earth does not save you i will not kill myself Uza went to help the ark and he died but the ark never fell hallelujah so be careful because some of us are literally killing ourselves you are priding in the fact that you are getting lean you have convinced yourself that it's a sign that you are spiritual that when men see you and your voice is husky your face is oily the, the, your appearance there's nothing to be desired about it you equate it to spirituality not so there is a dimension of your humanity and god rested god rested and the proof of rest is that you cease from your work you must rest if you plan to use your body for a long time you must create a system i used to say yes to every ministration jack of all trade going to win the whole world and one day the lord gave me a revelation he told me to look at a cross and he said your face is not the one on the crucifix you didn't die no i mean it very seriously and it dawned on me that i'm only a member of the body not the body so the best that i can be is an effective member of the body there are many men whose families have gone down the drain because they are doing ministry the children never get to see their father the husband never gets to spend time with the wife john lake how many of you have heard of john g lake when john g lake's wife was about to die john g lake's daughter said if john lake was around the mother would not die because he was there trying to save the world his wife was dying the daughters wanted their father but he was there becoming a lion and becoming an ox and he forgot that he was a human being and he came back to meet the obituary of his wife everybody say i'm human say it i'm human it's okay to cry yes it's okay to make mistakes absolutely absolutely it's all right to make mistakes samson allowed his humanity to go to the extreme when he followed a woman called delilah So I'm talking about the extremities of humanity because some of you, this part of it has consoled you so much. You are saying, are you kidding? So I'm human. So you can just do everything and say, I'm human, I beg. I'm human. Slept to the lady, I'm human. I took the beer, I'm human. Samson allowed his humanity to go so far and two things happened to him. And it will happen to anybody who allows his humanity to prevail over his spirituality. Your source of illumination will be taken and your glory will be taken from your life. Two things. The hair of a man, the Bible talks of a woman's hair being the glory. That means man as the bride of Christ has his hair representing his glory. And the Bible says two things. She was not interested. You would think that Delilah would cut off the hands of Samson. Is that not what he uses to beat people? He said immediately remove his eyes. Because if thy eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. So when you allow excessive humanity, there will be no illumination. So you don't fast again, you don't pray, you don't constrain yourself because you feel I'm human. The source of illumination will grow dim. That's what happened to Eli. Eli began to be so conscious of his old age. He allowed his humanity to interrupt his priesthood. And the Bible says his eye began to become dim. And it takes us to the fourth phase, the face of the flying eagle. So although you are human, less you allow your humanity to cross beyond its boundary, it reminds you that you are from above, the flying eagle. That there is a technology in the spirit that is able to remedy for the predicaments of your humanity. And then the Bible now begins to say, I know that even the young man can grow weary. The youth can faint. I know there is a provision for your humanity. It's not backsliding. I know there is a time you cannot pray. 
it's, it's natural. I know there is a time you may not want to study the word. There is a time challenges will overwhelm you. But it says there is a technology in the spirit that has been made available to supplement for that predicament. It says they that wait upon the Lord. It said they shall renew their strength. And they will mount up with wings. Not like birds. Like the eagle. That was the eagle there. They will mount up with wings. Like the eagles. So when men see your humanity and they see that you are perplexed on all sides, everything is happening and it looks like you will never come out. All of a sudden, you sustain the technology in the spirit. We will run and not grow weary. We'll walk and we'll not faint. For the Lord will go before us and his joy will be our strength. Mountain up with wings as eagles. As the spirit says his soul, we will come into his presence. We'll wait upon the Lord. You know the song? We will wait upon the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. For in his presence is fullness of joy. the technology in the spirit so the guy disappoints you and he said I won't marry you again no? I've just been looking for a way to tell you and although you are a great woman of God you will see your humanity find an expression you will cry and then when you come for koinonia like this you hear songs like this and it's a technology in the spirit that begins to mount you up with wings as an eagle and like Job, you said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change comes. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Oh, powerful. Can we sing that song? We will wait. We will wait upon the Lord. For in his presence, this fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored as we wait upon the Lord. Just the voices alone sing. We will wait upon the Lord for in His presence is fullness of joy and our strength shall be restored as we wait upon the Lord so your rent is overdue it's okay for your humanity to find expression Time has gone and marriage doesn't look like it's coming. You are now 36, 37. It's okay to be human. Hallelujah. You've been wearing one trouser for the past five months. It's okay to worry about it. Don't say I don't care. Care. It's okay. Hallelujah. Every guy you smile at is frowning at you. You are a human being. It's okay for your humanity to find expression. You started a church and after three years, you are just seven. It will disturb you. No matter how a man of faith you are, it's okay. You trusted God that at this level of your life, you will be soaring financially, but it looks like it's not so. It's okay, you are human. But remember that you are also a flying eagle. And it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Mm. And so they held Samson bound in his hands. And that was a symbol of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. And not much could be done because the Philistines held these two ministries that represent the foundation of the church. But the Bible says all of a sudden the hand of the Lord came upon him and he was no longer a human being. And the Bible says 
the rope was like flask. Come live in me Oh my life Take over Come live in me And I will rise On you Sing it one more time Come live in me all my life. Take over. over. Come breathe in me, and I will rise. From glory to glory. That's how you rise. When you allow the anointing of the Spirit to open you up to the dimension where you are a flight eagle. From glory to glory. And now forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you And I'll forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you So tonight is an admonition He said I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things Although ye already know them and I established in this present truth. It says, No man that warreth entangles himself with civilian affairs. The Bible says, Meditate on these things. Give yourself only to them that your profiting will appear unto all. We're going to pray. Listen. Listen. There are many teachings that have come that can minister to every area of your life that you desire growth and these messages are all free from finances to your relationship with the holy spirit to understanding the kingdom to marriage to success to greatness to faith you can access the resources and stay there stay in the presence until something breaks open. Rise up on your feet and we're going to pray. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Oh. Come on, give him praise. The truths you are hearing will make you mighty. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Come on, celebrate His Majesty. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to You. All the glory belongs to You, oh God. Hallelujah. Three prayer points, and we are done for the night. Please help that lady. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Prayer point number one. We are going to pray and say, Father, cause your word to prevail. Listen, listen, listen. Until your convictions about the reality of the word transcends that which you see, you cannot produce faith. I've told you, this nonsense that is taught about faith is not the way faith works. Faith does not just work by jacking yourself into nonsense. Faith is a derivative of the depth of your conviction about the reality of God and his word and it's entirely a product of revelation lift your voice and say Lord strengthen my conviction about spiritual things lift your voice and pray 
Strengthen my conviction. Strengthen my conviction about the reality of your word, the reality of your power, the reality of the anointing, the reality of your principles, the immutability of your counsel. Let my convictions be strengthened. They that know their God, they that know their God, they that have experienced Him shall be strong, empowered with might, and He said they will do exploits. Katana parete kete, nanta proto koko soto. They that know they are God. Oh yes, pray. When your conviction becomes strong, you will do exploits in ministry. You will do exploits on your job. You will do exploits in business. You will do exploits in leadership. You will take the mountains and confront the gates and stamp upon the gates of the enemy. Strengthen my convictions. Where my convictions are shaky, strengthen my conviction. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. The dimension of the glory and the power of God that is released in your life is dependent on the strength of your conviction about spiritual realities. Hallelujah. When you realize, it's not enough to know that the spirit of the Christ lives in you. Do you know the implication of what that means? It's not enough to know that you are a success. Do you know the implication? Strengthen my convictions. Strengthen my convictions. You are going to pray. Mention the areas of your life where you are not yet convicted, where the word of God has not gained ground, and say, Lord, help me. Lift up your voice and pray. For some of us, it's in the area of finance. Some of us, it's in the area of marriage. Some of us, it's in the area of our strength. Some of us, it's in the area of your job. Lift up your voice and pray. Strengthen my conviction. Deepen my roots. Deepen my roots. Let me understand the system of the kingdom. Are you praying inside and outside? Pray. Strengthen my conviction. The Bible says, be unshakable, be immovable, be steadfast. Be unshakable, be immovable. Hallelujah. 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 Don't doubt what you are speaking. Peter said, This is that. As you receive, you can walk back to your seat. The entire congregation inside and outside can we just walk and pray in the spirit? What a night! Baba bara da bara da basha, rakata baka bosa kaya, rapeta sata brage bara da basha, rakata baba baba baba, leera da basi pradige bara da basha. Thank you for your presence. Rate kaporia da bara da basha, raparia da 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 bosha, despeke te bara da bosha. Makapara da bala da bosha. 
What you're speaking is tongues. Go ahead. You can go back to your seats and continue praying. As you go back to your seats, continue praying. Go ahead and pray in the spirit, everyone. Say, Lord, tonight is my night. The presence of God is mighty in this place. To heal, to deliver. Ratu kabari ga kabala na basha, ranta kabari ke dele ke bosa, ranta kabosa. Give us an experience tonight. Ranta bala na basha, kreke de bele de bo. Holy, are you Lord? All creation call you love. Worthy is your name. Come on, lift your hands and worship him. We worship your majesty. Awesome God. Awesome God. is the only resistance to you then I assure you you are leaving this place after tonight a changed, a transformed if it is true that the only enemy of the Christian is Satan and nothing else then I assure you that nothing will stop the manifestation of the word of God in your life tonight I am confident of this if it is true that Satan is the only resistance God will transform your life tonight and how many of you came here with expectations in your heart you see one of the most dangerous things to do is to come into God's presence with a sense of familiarity because the Bible says that they're worshiping in heaven and while they are recovering from the experience of he who was they see who, who he who is he who was is still carrying a dimension of glory that they have not finished comprehending. 
and then they see a new level. I tell you something, God will do something in your life tonight. It will change your life in a dramatic way, in a way that you will be shocked. Your finances, in your health, the power of God is so strong in this place. That's why we are taking our time to worship. You must be patient enough to worship God. He's not your mate. Don't let new creation reality make you think God is your mate. You are one with him. He brought you into that experience. You didn't earn it. And so we are taking our time to worship him because he is great. Holy is the The whole sea. Worship the miracle worker. The whole sea. Forget about your sickness. Forget about any challenge. And worship him. The whole sea. The whole sea. The ancient sea. The whole sea. showed me a vision this morning and I saw a woman in a labor room I just got up I was praying and I thought God wanted me to pray for a woman who was pregnant maybe a woman pregnant somewhere who he wanted to give birth and I saw a woman hallelujah her water had broken she was ready to give birth hallelujah and then I saw it was as though the woman was, you know, there are medical people, you know that there are certain conditions that must be met for safe delivery. And it looked as if there were other, there were factors that were not yet complete. Hallelujah. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, release the delivery. Ah, yeah. You don't know what God is out to do in your life tonight. He said, for that which I show you in the secret place, declare upon the mountaintop. Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1. It says, I will set myself upon the tower and I will stand and I will watch to see what the Lord will say. I tell you, God has a word tonight. The servants of God came up here telling you the power of God's word. Tonight you are in for an encounter. The Lord has vowed with his name to make sure you don't live the same. Hallelujah. You believe it? You believe it? We're in seasons when your faith must be alive. When you hear the word of God, you receive it. Forget, let me tell you something. You insult God every time you exalt your situations above God. I don't care what you came here with. Let me tell you something. The psalmist and also Solomon said there is nothing that is new upon the earth. Are you listening to me? You're not the first to have a, a cancer or HIV or to be in need of something a growth or lumps or whatever it is or to have curses in families and all kinds of demonic things we serve a God who is able if God cannot solve your problem then we are, we are finished oh but he is the one above can we sing that song yes Lord how many of you are ready to sing that song <laughs> hallelujah On your hands together. Forget about your challenges. Let joy rise in your spirit. Hey, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is no other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
does not get enough faith. Tell him we are a God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is no other. Yes, Lord. 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 You are the King. Is that we will not die casually. <laughs> Amen. I don't know how many of you want to die casually. I've made up my mind to live long and to declare the word of God. So if you want to live long and declare the word of God, which is the gift God has given to us, I want you to say, I am alive. I am, alive. I am wealthy. I am wealthy. All, things All things are possible for me. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Give your neighbor a high five and tell the person, I love you. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. It's a privilege this night before I go on. It, it was a setup between me and my, and my staff here. I came into Zaria today and I told them, men and brethren, what shall we do to Apostle Simon? They said, this is what we're going to do. I'm serious. This evening... We went out somewhere to go and get something. I'm serious, that's my testimony. We went to go and get something for you. <laughs> when we got there, we were taking out the thing. The owner of the place said, I've been looking for you, Mars. I heard you've left Zaria. I've been looking for you to be a blessing to you. And as we were picking your own, they were giving me my own. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? So tonight, somebody will say, why is it that he's doing it openly? They say if you are giving out something with your right hand, your left hand should not know. If you like, let my left hand know. What's my business? Who asked my left hand to go and look? <laughs> Amen. So right now, on behalf of me and my wonderful staff, this is just um, a token to say a very big thank you for being a friend to the industry and um, being a blessing to us. And uh, also... You chose me to be your friend. I didn't choose you. <laughs> so it's my pleasure. Come and celebrate Jesus as we present this. Amen. Men and brethren, that is not your own. Your own is coming. This evening, I want to say quickly that um, we have been a, God has been a blessing to us. And among the few people who believed in me and my dream, is my wonderful pastor, Reverend Joshua Tende, and uh, a wonderful one here. Amen. Amen. Early this week, was it this week or last week? This week, I met him in his office. We were just discussing. I told him what the Lord is doing in this talk entertainment industry. He said, talk entertainment industry is my own God's given assignment. Everybody have their own assignment. Amen. His own is to preach the word and heal the people. My own is to make you laugh and you get healed. <laughs> Amen. And I don't take my ministry lightly, no matter what. I take it very serious. And he's the person who has given me the biggest challenge of my life as a comedian. Not just an, a comedian, an international comedian, not just international comedian, a gospel comedian calling me to MC a crusade. How many of you were massacred that time? 
That was my biggest. I, I was thinking, I asked myself, how will he so believe in me? So, how? Some massacre people, some of them, Hausa, Kaduna people. If you tell them Robbie, some of them came with their problem, I want to make them laugh. <laughs> oh God, but I thank God, it was a very great time. We had a very great time and I experienced a lot of welcoming from ENI itself. The partners, our brethren over there, the pastors, come and celebrate everybody. <laughs> now, let me say this before I have my seat. He's going to tell us that later. So, this center of entertainment industry is just four years. Yes, the industry God has given to me. It's an entertainment industry. But the assignment God gave to me is that we are going to use entertainment as a platform to preach Jesus Christ in all nations. Amen. So, we are coming to bring show for you. You are coming in form of show. But behind the show, you go receive Christ and get you the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. That's our assignment. So that thing has been happening over the place. And we don't just establish, like I um, placed the testimony on Facebook. We started four years ago, but with four years, we have three offices here in Zaria. We are started four years ago, now in Abuja and now in Sierra Leone, Freetown. We have our office over there. Amen. And the first event we'll be having in Sierra Leone will be October, second week of October. The whole country is waiting to experience the first show. Amen. And I thank God because their heart is open to receive what God has given to us. But in Zaria, we'll be celebrating the four years anniversary in Zaria by the second week of June, which is 10th of June. We decide to bring it on campus so that every one of you will partake of it. So within the time, we'll tell you how everything is going to happen. So we want your heart to be open towards it, to receive the good work. But I want to say a very big thank you for believing in me, believing in what we're doing, and every one of you who has been following us on Facebook, on everything, and not on Twitter, will enter there soon. Some of you tweet. I don't start tweeting. When I start tweeting, I put sweet there so that I, you know, when you tweet, you get something to leak. Now, let me advise you, if you don't know a thing, find out the rudiment of that thing before you enter trouble. The reason why I left choir. Why are you singing? Why are choir member here? How many of you sing here? Before if I sing, come and see where people are crying. I think they will be crying. But don't ask them why they are crying. <laughs> but the result you get, you will not like it. So I was, I was in a program one time. Our pastor told us, we're going to have overcomers convention in a week's time. Me, I traveled. The only thing I did was to call the choir master. What is our uniform? They say red and black. He not give me the further anything. But there was a song with the heart before then. When time came, I came into town a day to the program. I didn't even ask the song. I still joined them. That day I wore my black and red. I sat in choir seat, not knowing that the pastor have already told them that the first day it is not the whole choir that will sing. It's only six people that will sing. They selected the six people that did their rehearsals. Then I said, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together as you make welcome the overcomers choir. The six people will stand up. I joined them, stand up. I don't know. I thought others have stood up. Oh. Nobody else. So oh. they did like this. We climbed the stage. Now, sir, this stage, I don't see the many. I whispered to the choir master. I said, "Guy, where are the rest?" He said, "Pastor said only six. Eh? I don't know this. So he said, "No, go out. Stay here." You know, one good thing about choir: if you are many, if you don't know the song, you stick over up. When others are singing, you better do like this. And the only time they will catch you that you don't know the song, when you overdo your own. <laughs> That's when they know you don't know. But while we are standing, there are six of us. My brother. If others go here, I'll tell go here because what thing I won't sing. Now to rejam them. I don't jump in the tears that come up with my eyes. I don't know the, I don't know thing I go sing. The next thing I enter spirit, begin to pray. I pray till the program finish. Now, thank you very much, Apostle. I'm learning from you, your suit. You could see the anointing of God flowing. Amen. The reason why the reason why I stopped wearing suit was the first wedding they asked me to not to MCO to do best man. They gave us the material to sew. I gave my tailor, gave him my measurement. My tailor said, "Mas is I said, I perceive my spirit said it increase." I said, "No perceive anything. So what did I give you?" Tailor, go so what in their own spirit. I don't come back on Friday to take my clothes. Now, Saturday morning, around 7 a.m., I go take my suit where I give them. 
When I carry the thing up, no be sweet again, I see now be shit. My brother, that is not my problem. My problem is not the best seat. Now we are my set up out there, then near my ear. I we are close, my set up out there, my ear. I begin to ask the guy, why you do me this thing? He said, as a manager, you go walk. I don't wear suit, they wear the me and my friend, they must enter. As we enter, I said, God, you don't have to help me. Two of us, they must enter. Shut up out the way, near my ear. Begin to come on Moses' side. As it come out, we are a lot of money, guy. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4 says that he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. I can't imagine myself making people laugh like this. That would be frustration. Mazi, you have this anointing. Appreciate him, please celebrate him. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's get to the business of tonight. Lord, we give you praise. Matthew chapter 12. The Lord will heal, deliver, empower. Hallelujah. Matthew 12. I want to share with you something very briefly and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. I need you to follow me very carefully because the understanding of what I'm about to teach will open up your spirit to release and to receive miracles. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord with my mouth shall I make it known from the rising of the sun right until it's going down I will see of the mercies of the Of the wisdom of the Lord. Verse 43. Matthew 12, verse 43. Hallelujah. Mm. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the way? Allow me to sing it to you. Don't sing it. How can uh, is a question I'm asking you. You think I'm singing? We're about to read a very serious scripture. I'm only converting my question in a song. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the wind? How can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit? How can you fly like the eagle? When you don't know the wind, it's power at work in you, it's changing everything in obedience to Christ. 43. Are you there? Matthew 12, verse 43. If you don't have a Bible, make sure you are sharing with someone. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places. Seeking rest and findeth none. And then he said, I will return into my house from which I came out. This is the spirit speaking now. And when he is come, he finds a serious situation. He finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Please follow me, Christians. Then goeth he and take it with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself and the last state of that man who is speaking here not an angel not a prophet not a high priest the Christ himself is speaking he's showing us a mystery the words of Jesus are a window into the realm of the spirit they guide you to understand the operation of spiritual things hallelujah Jesus is speaking here and he's saying that when a spirit is casted out of a man, 
He said that that spirit will go searching for dry places and not finding anyone. The spirit will advise himself and say, let me go back to that man. Hallelujah. And he says, you will come to that man and find him. So the Bible likens a man to a house. Hallelujah. He says that he will find it swept. Question, who swept it? Somebody must have swept it. Are you following me? Clean. Who cleaned it? Garnished. But empty. And when the spirit sees that, listen to the wickedness of Satan. It would have been enough for the spirit to say, thank you. I would say, he said, no way. He goes back and becomes the least of the seven other demons he's bringing. Are you following me now? The Bible says he goes and gets seven other spirits. More wicked than itself, making eight the number of new beginning. And they start a new circle of destruction. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, that the end of that man. Have you seen believers who experience the power of God, the miracle of God, the deliverance of God, and temporarily seem to have some solutions and they are happy all to find out that they become worse than they started. Families. Hallelujah. I want to share with you something the Lord shared with me. I didn't even read it in the Bible. It was when the Spirit of God shared it with me. I searched out and I found out it was true. Hallelujah. Now, the ministers of God began to talk about the ministry of the word. And I need to help us understand something even as we pray. That when the word of God, listen, when a man is not born again, the spiritual implication of that is this. Please, can I have someone? Come, sir. When a man is not born again, I hope you realize that man is a tripartite being. Say after me, man is a tripartite being. Spirit, soul, and body. You are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in what? A body. The body hosts the spirit. The soul is the realm of the personality of the man. His will, his emotion, his intellect. Hallelujah. The soul is the connection of the spirit of that man to his body. It is through the means of the soul that he is able to relate both to the realm of the spirit and to this realm. Are you following me now? Now, when a man is not born again, listen to me. When a man is not born again, spiritual death is not cessation from breathing. I hope you know that. Spiritual death is the absence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a man. The Holy Spirit is what we call eternal life. I've said this again and again. Eternal life is not one box that the Holy Spirit brings and drops in you. The presence of the Spirit of God is eternal life. Moses was standing upon a place and fire was burning a bush and it was dirty. And because of the presence of God, he said, remove your shoe for where thou standest has suddenly become holy. Not because anybody swept the ground. Are you listening to me? And so it's important to realize that the spirit of man outside of Christ, I hope you know that Satan and demons are spirits. Hallelujah. Do you agree with me? Praise God. Now, they have the opportunity. There are three levels. Please listen. There are three levels of the manifestation of Satan in the lives of people. Number one is the willful permission. Is what we know to be what people call witchcraft and all of this. Where someone opens up his spirit willingly by any act of initiation, whether culture and all of these things. Are you understanding me? So all the people in our village that know, they know all the music artists that sell their soul to Satan. Are you following me now? They are not trying to, it's not a mistake. They did it consciously. They did it willingly. The way you gave your heart to the Lord, did you do it consciously? You said, Lord, I open up myself. Is that correct? That's how other people have come up to the altar. It's amazing that all, all of them are all done in the altar. Hallelujah. And they opened up their spirit for the manifestation and the manipulation of Satan. At that point, Satan takes complete control of their will. Are you listening to me? Their emotions and their intellect. And they only live as puppets carrying out the activity of Satan. Day and night there is a communication between them and the realm of the spirit. That happens to one who is not born again. Are you listening to me? Now when you get born again something happens. 
the bible tells us that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness where satan and his rule and his reign is into what the kingdom of light the kingdom of god's dear son are you following me now and now what that happens is that by the act of new birth by the shed blood of jesus christ something dramatic happens the bible makes us to understand that on account of the finished work of jesus christ are you listening to me on account of the finished work of christ the bible makes us to understand that your spirit becomes regenerated are you listening to me your spirit what does that mean there is a cutting off with satan and everything as far as your spirit is concerned are you following me now now here is the error in the body of christ and i want you to listen and listen again i speak this not in an attempt to make a boast or anything but let me tell you something i have been caught up in the realm of the spirit many times and so the things that i tell you they are not just things i read in the bible there is a difference between what you have read and what you have experienced are you listening to me now do you realize that a believer can no longer be possessed with a demon are you listening to me because light and darkness cannot dwell in the same place as far as your spirit is concerned but what we do not realize is that your soul is another faculty on its own composed of your will your intellect your mind and your mind is a store of thoughts the realm of your soul are you listening to me and one thing we do not understand is that the bible says in first peter i believe chapter 1 verse 9 it says receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul what is the bible saying it said there is a remaining part of salvation that has not yet happened to you he said it's called the end of your faith the completeness he says the salvation of your soul what is the salvation of the soul is what we generally know to be called the renewing of the mind but it's, it's not not only that i need you to understand the bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of and he gives us a strange name he calls something strongholds he said casting down every imagination comes from the greek word yetzar and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of christ then he says bringing every thought to the obedience of christ question was paul speaking to unbelievers are you listening to me another issue paul looks at the galatian church and says oh foolish galatians he said who has bewitched you why will paul use that kind of word for christians He says, all oh, foolish Galatians, why have you allowed Satan access to the realm of your soul? Are you listening to me? And this is where a lot of people miss it. While it is true that in Christ, the Bible says, blotting out every handwriting and ordinances that spoke against us, he nailed it to the cross hallelujah the bible says we have been called out of every tribe every tongue every nation but what we do not realize christians is that like people uh, kenyon ew kenyon will say there is a legal side of redemption and there is a vital side of redemption the legal side of redemption is reality as seen from the perspective of the father are you listening to me the vital side is you establishing that reality so that it becomes in the earth and in your life as it is in the heavens the bible says forever O lord thy word is settled in heaven it never said it's settled in the earth it takes the faith and the operation of the son of god to cause the word to be settled in the earth and in your life and now what people do not understand and hear me friends i bless god for all of the teachings and the buildings and the equippings but the army of god that must rise we must have knowledge of how to stand upon our victory so when you get born again are you listening to me satan no longer has access to your spirit but the trouble is this if you were only using your spirit then you would have been perfect but now your soul is still there the faculties of your mind your will your intellect 
are you listening to me the pornography you watch you still remember are you listening to me the, although you are born again the bottle of beer that you took the taste of it is still in you come on are you listening to me don't look at me as if I'm a Christian hallelujah that sense of wickedness and bitterness is, is there and the trouble is this the word of God now this I'm explaining to you the ministry of the word to the believer hear me I'm going to be redefining concepts I need if this is all I do tonight it is very important because we need men and women who are knowledgeable are you listening to me for me I, I don't see it as pride in ministry when people are always running coming man of God pray for me there is a demon in our family there is this and that there is this and this is why we are taking our time to teach it is our goal that every one of us becomes strong and fortified so that we can now go back to our homes and our ministries and our territories and begin to legislate out of knowledge and understanding any ministry that makes the people totally dependent on the man of God such that when he's not around they cannot do anything there is a name for it the Bible calls it witchcraft and manipulation I don't care which ministry are you listening to me Jesus was with 12 people for three and a half years and he was confident to know there were still some other things that he had not completed in his course curriculum even when he resurrected he still stayed with them and he finished everything he said I am confident there are many things I can tell you but you cannot bear them now he says how be it when the spirit of truth is come he shall guide you into all truth for he shall take up the things that are mine and shall give it unto you and he left them and the people did not fail a true apostolic generation is that generation where everyone stands tall everyone is equipped with the knowledge of the things of the spirit it's not enough it is not our pride to just record testimonies of cancers and all of these things it is our pride to know that the next miracle service will just arrange five or fifteen people and we are just worshiping while the remaining people are healing and raising crutches and moving with people this is proof that we are moving forward so for those of you in ministry there is need for us to redefine our paradigm when you become the man of God doing everything alone and when without you the system cripples you are an idol hallelujah are you listening to me so we must train a church that is full of understanding not men and women who are gullible many believers do not have interest in the word of god we only have interest for results and power and solution that's why we like prophets don't waste my time teaching me the word of god just tell me will this business work or not and if no what is the solution can i sow my way into changing your prophecy balaam speak to me and let me go but that's the kind of generation that the spirit of error will sweep and will be crippled under the trap of Satan. But the Lord is raising a generation of men and women who are empowered by the spirit. That not only will you receive healings and will you be empowered, but you will be equipped in grace and faith. One day Peter and John, after Jesus had left, they were just discussing, wondering what they were going to do with their lives. And suddenly, the Bible makes us to understand that they saw a man at the gate beautiful. They said, now the master has trained us and he gave us a name. He gave us an authority. And they looked at him. They said, today is this day, Mr. Man. Now is time. See, our greatest joy in this place is to see everyone reproducing the things that you see in our lives. Are you listening to me? To see that everyone is walking in grace and power. There's nothing wrong when you come to receive miracles. That's why we are always there. Because sometimes when you are learning and growing in the things of the spirit, after you stretch and your hand cannot reach, that's why God puts us there. We hold your hands and say we were once there. We understand. There's nothing to be ashamed of. That you prayed and prayed and prayed and the sickness didn't go and you had to run to chemists. You run to us and we say, Mr. Man, go to the chemist and get a drug. When you are well, you can keep searching. A day will come, you will build fortification. There's nothing to be afraid of. This is a school. God is training an army. 
But our greatest pride is not to sit down and see a queue of hundreds of people waiting for counseling. And you ask the person, what is the issue? And the person tells you something cried in my room. Ha ha. The reason why many men of God have not taken up the challenge to build God's people is because they are benefiting from the weaknesses of their members. Let me tell you what it does for them. Number one, it does not put pressure on them to keep building upon the word. Because when you have men and women who are gullible, you know in this place, if you stand upon this altar, you must be prepared. Because then, while you are standing here, there are people with prophetic radar scanning you. When you are standing upon this altar, you must confess your sins do everything you need to do before you stand this is not the kind of altar that you just stand and shout no 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 somebody might be sitting but standing from a mountain god has been equipping us he will watch you make your pride and do your error i thank god you see let me tell you something this altar here is not all you see it's high if you stand here you will know you will shake up and down in the spirit until every flesh shakes out of you. Because when you look at the sensitivity and the perception of those listening to you, you know that you cannot teach them error. And they nod their head gullibly. No, sir! And this is what we are achieving. We are not raising arrogant people. We are only raising men and women of understanding. So that when you go somewhere, somewhere and everybody say, run! And everybody come and lick the man of God's leg. And see everybody going like a dog. Gullible generation. No knowledge and understanding. And even when it is truly God that has said that, you will have a confirmation in your spirit. That although this is a, a stupid experience, but then God is in it. Are you listening to me? And so I want to teach us the ministry of the word. Because on one side, we have believers saying once you are born again, that's all. There's no business with Satan. You are refined. You are in Christ. Satan, you are seated up. Satan does not have a place in your life. But the people are dying. They are still seeing causes follow them. We, we can pretend it and paint ourselves and speak in tongues in church and jump up and down. Your brother didn't get a job. You didn't get a job. Your sister didn't get a job. What do we call that? You may not want to call it the name, but what is it called? Are you listening to me? And you are born again. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are not married. Your brother is not married. You have refused to say in the name of Jesus, nothing is wrong with my life. But you are seeing the same thing. There is a, a thin line between stupidity and faith. The difference is knowledge, understanding, and light. Are you listening to me? And then on one side, here we have people always talking about Satan, always talking about deliverance, always talking about the strength of Satan, talking about everything, level this, 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 level 777, and they say, I met one demon, do you know how strong Satan is? And you see us come, I mean, we just imagine it, and people put graphic images in their churches with Satan having the horn, and when they talk, you're even shaking in the church. They finish teaching you about Satan and all of these things, and we have believers who are always thinking about Satan. So where is the balance? because in both faces we see the power of God let it rain let it rain open the floor of heaven hallelujah now watch this the moment you get born again is your spirit man listen to me this is why is there are certain people that because of the impact of the experience of their new birth they get born again they fall under the anointing they get filled with the holy spirit they begin to pray in tongues and even lay hands on people and they are healed are you listening to me and then what happens the men of god who do not have discernment just look and they call the person and say you go and be a head of our ministry somewhere and you do not realize that this is a babe by every standard the gifts of the spirit is not equivalent to spiritual maturity it takes a walking with the spirit it takes an activity of the word of god and this is what we are teaching tonight is miracle service the miracle is happening to you no 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 the first miracle is not your your body is children's bread we are coming to that are you listening to me Now, but let me explain to you 
that concept of deliverance. Because our concept of deliverance that we have in our generation is very sad, very sorrowful, very disheartening. Hallelujah. Where believers go every day, every week, every month, every year, I need you to understand that there is something I will show you and you will see from the word of God. It is never God's desire, listen to me, that a, be a believer keep being delivered, delivered, delivered. Then is it true that the authority of Christ is above Satan? Are you listening to me? However, you will need it all the time until you listen to the remaining part of my teaching. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, the word of God begins to bring deliverance. What is deliverance? Deliverance means you are separated from things. You are separated from mindsets. Are you listening to me? You are separated from strongholds. Be deliverance is not all about falling and manifesting and foaming in your mouth. There is an instant when we begin to pray now. For some, some of you are sitting down quietly, just minding your business. When we begin to pray, some of you don't know when you are out here rolling on the floor. You see, you don't even know what is wrong with you, but you are born again and you are tongue talking. The word of God does what we know to be deliverance. It separates you. It builds you. Are you listening to me? It begins to break your mind from the ordinances of the past and the things that give Satan access to your life. Jesus speaking says, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. That means for as long as Satan finds some things that belong to him, he has legal access to your life. Are you listening to me? Jesus said the condition for me to defeat Satan and death is that he does not have anything. For a kingdom that is divided against itself shall not stand. And so while you are born again, you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are walking in life and power, your mind is not renewed. That's why one day you see somebody who loves God. A pastor, after preaching and doing everything, he just runs to his room. After praying in tongues, he spends three hours watching pornography. And even him, he doesn't know what is wrong with him. And he's embarrassed to admit that there is something torturing his spiritual life. It's easy to come out and wear suit and just stand and speak. But we all have the things that lack of knowledge has brought into our lives. That humility, that's why the Bible says you must receive the word of God with meekness. Because sometimes it will need to redefine your philosophy and break you out. Bible says strong meat belongs to them who by reason of use have attained unto full age and have exercised their spiritual senses in order to discern between good and evil. We have a very weak generation of Christians. This is why Satan can ride through churches. Men will be sitting down. Demons will come and hold mics and preach and heal and deliver and do everything and there is no discernment whatsoever. Are you listening to me tonight? So the first ministry of the word in your life is deliverance. This is the reason why, hear me, you break away from all the access points that Satan has in your life. There are two ways that Satan can have access to a man's life. Number one, what we know to be covenants. Number two, ignorance. That's where we have things like um, inheritance, family curses and all of these things now i need you to know that these things are not fake are you listening to me if there is something called generational blessings there must be something called generational curses the only challenge is we stretch it beyond these limits and we begin to speak and make it look like everybody everywhere i don't have any generational curse following me although there is because i've seen it in the life of others are you listening to me the word of God separates you. So by the build up of the word, what happens? All of the demons and the strongholds that are gaining ground in your life, whether by direct encounter with the power of God, such as a miracle service like this, are you listening to me? Or the intake of God's word. All of these demons and strongholds, listen to me, that have stayed in your, that have gained access to you, Whenever they leave, this is where many believers miss it out. The Bible says that demon leaves and he goes round and comes back and does what? Finds the place swept, clean. And the Bible says you are only clean through the word. So that means there is an operation of the word that made that man that clean. 
But what we do not realize is there are two faces to the word. One is as a weapon of deliverance. He sent forth his word and his word he let them. The sent word heals and delivers. But when the word of God is taught, it edifies. What is edification? It builds up spiritual fortification. Are you listening to me? So that now you are not only clean through the word, you are empowered and according to Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you in all richness so that whenever Satan comes, he will not find access in your life again. There are many believers who go for deliverance, fall under the anointing, roll up and down, foam in their mouth and get up. And they say, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. And the demons come back again and they still see themselves worst walking in the things. And they say, ah, I was healed. I'm sure I was healed. I was healed. I mean, I know. But now I'm seeing the sickness returning again. Of course. Because there is a fortification. Are you listening to me? It's not enough. That's why we take three weeks in a month to teach the word. Are you listening to me? And then at miracle services like this, we allow the power of God to set free, to heal, to deliver. Let me tell you something. If all we will do in Koinonia is receive, prophesy, we will have a generation. You will receive results because it's the sent word. But the sent word only heals and delivers. The sent word does not equip and build. The sent word is sent on a mission. It, it accomplishes what it was sent to do. And there is the word that is sent to accomplish and return back. There is the word that is sent to stay with you. If my word dwell, if, if you dwell in me and my words dwell, not go and return. There is an operation of the word of God that is meant to stay with you so that as you are full of the word, you become like Christ in power and authority and grace. And there is a spiritual fortification. And at that point, you can speak that day though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. At that point you become full of the word and you don't need to fear all these devils and witches and wizards again and so it's not enough for deliverance to come it's not enough for you to be healed it's not enough for you to be free it's not enough for you to say okay there are curses and things that come from families and god is breaking you free it's not enough to say i'm born again you must invest in the word that's why it's important to find your let me tell you something and i say it with every sense of seriousness if you find yourself in ministry where all you receive is prophecy, 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 you are not going to grow. Are you listening to me? You will receive results, dramatic and fearful results, but you will never grow into spiritual things. The word must be taught. To send it means to declare it as it is. The word performs its operation. But when it is taught, we teach you the principles of the kingdom that empower you and equip you to stand. Hallelujah. The teaching ministry is the hope of preparing the army of God. Without a teaching ministry, we are finished. What is another name for your lecturer? What does he do? He spends four years expounding, teaching you principles. That's the reason why you can have a university 30, 40 years. And every time you graduate a student, say from engineering, you have certain expectations because he has been taught. These are principles. In Church of the Most High, I need us to arise and realize that without the word of God seated in our spirits, we will keep going back. Satan will come out and you will keep coming in. That's what is happening to many of our families. We have, I'm not against them, you can have them, but without this understanding, you will only frustrate yourself. We have monthly deliverances, weekly deliverances, all kinds of deliverances. And the truth is, most of the people are not interested in growth. They are just interested in results. And since they told them that it's this witch or that wizard that is stopping them, every time we go to meet a prophet, we just want instant solution. That's why many people are not interested in teaching ministries. It takes an unusual grace of God to keep a crowd to listen to the word. Because when crowds come, they come out of their lust and selfishness. 
Not many people are interested in growth and for the power of God to touch them. You want a man of God that just comes up and says, everybody stand up. And they say, lift your right hand. Bring a, a white handkerchief, a red one. If there is not, we have it here for sale. Are you listening to me? And by the time, we like, we like instructions. Not because we love God. We want quick things. We, we like by cutting processes. So all of you who want husbands, quickly run, come and drop 1,000 Naira and then I will pray for you. You can drop the money and fall under the anointing and roll and go back to your seat. You will never get consistent results. So we have programmed ourselves to depend day and night. And we have a lot of men of God who look and they call you. They call some of our fathers. Bring 30,000 and say not. He say, I will shut the heavens over you and your business. And the man is running. He say, hey, hey, hey. the prophet said he will shut the heavens. Find 30,000. Even if you don't have, give me. Tell somebody, grow up. That's why we are criticized day and night. Because our job is to open the body to the truth of God's word unadulterated. And the dangerous thing is it puts pressure on all of us men of God. Because the moment your members begin to have light, you as the man of God cannot sit down again. It will put pressure on you to keep pressing. And this is what many men of God do not want. We don't want anyone to challenge you. The moment you stand and you are looking and you say, I see a river. 50 people are also seeing that river. So you can't lie. You can't just say, I see a river. Ah, the people have been trained. Their eyes are open. They are only sitting quietly, but they are seeing. You tell lies. Somebody walks up to you and says, sorry, yo, not to offend you. But was that, is it not a crown? I saw it too. That means your prayer life has to be alive. That means your word life has to be alive. That means the day you rise up from the bed of fornication and come up, there will be discernment. It puts pressure on you to walk in truth. And this is what many people do not want. But God is raising an apostolic generation that will not only receive miracles, but will be empowered. Not to be arrogant and condemn people. Are you listening to me? But to be fortified spiritually that will command results. That's the reason why our meetings are not just to heal, to deliver, but it's an impartation. Are you listening to me? And that's what some of you are going to receive tonight. Impartation. As I'm speaking to you right now, many of you are receiving impartation. It doesn't take more than one minute for you to be healed. Are you listening to me? It does. The word of God is not so slow. But the word of God is what you must receive in your spirit. And then you are strong. Hallelujah. How many of you believe this tonight? And so there are many of you that although you are born again, you will realize that Satan has gotten access to your life and access to your family. And tonight we are going to take authority all over all of those demonic manifestations. Are you listening to me? That everything that has delayed you by the power of the word of God, we will push you forward prophetically. Hallelujah. That you will be fortified with the word of God. That you will go and now be the miracle worker. You will release the miracle in your homes. Are you listening to me? That many of you tonight will encounter an anointing that will cause you to so prosper. And you will begin to make others prosper by reason of that anointing. That many of you will encounter an ability of the spirit. Discernment. You stand in your house and the Lord begins to show you things. This is what we want. And for all of you who came here with every kind of sickness, I want you to know that there is a devil behind it and that devil is going to leave you. Are you listening to me? Looked at the woman and said, Woman, thou art loose. From what? What did he see? He said, Thou art loose from thy infirmity. There is a wicked spirit called the spirit of infirmity. And the light and the power of God's word comes to bring you miracles. How many of you desire to walk in greater levels of his anointing? Because there will be an impartation in this place. In one minute, I'd like you to rise up on your feet and pray. Pray and say, Lord, give me a miracle. My heart is open. All of you who are sick, now is the time for faith to be released in your spirit. Within the next few minutes that we have, 
I like you to release your faith because the power of God is here. Rapata kapara da da bosa, lenda bati ketea, rate bazi kele bosha. We hail you, Most High. We hail you, Most High. Lift your hands, everybody. We hail you, Most High. We hail you, Lord. We have you, Lord. Now, I want to cast out devils and break men free from the oppression of Satan. The power of God is so strong in this place, and inside and outside. Ushers, please, I want you to help me. Hallelujah. As I begin to speak, the power of God will come like a mighty rushing wind and it will blow. Ushers, let me have those people. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of Satan broken over lives, over families. Lift your hands, everybody. In the name of Jesus, every divination and stronghold of Satan, I break you free right now every manifestation of satan go 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 i release the power of god right now upon the congregation inside and outside i cast out devils in the name of jesus i see the power of god like a mighty rushing wind. Lift your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to shout the name Jesus just once. My God, I see a sword rolling in the spirit. Parateka pateka topasia. As we shout that name, the power of God will fall and set men free. All shall be ready. Are you ready? Lift your hands, everybody. I like you to shout Jesus. Jesus. Fire, fire, the fire of the spirit. That fire of body. That devil is a liar. Inside and outside, the fire of the spirit. The power of the Holy Ghost upon you in the name of Jesus. Every devil, every devil, go, 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 go. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name that at the mention of the name of Jesus. Bring this lady. That devil, you know my voice. Out of her right now. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Please bring this lady. The power of God is still falling inside and outside. Satan, leave this lady now. Come out of her. 
Come out of her now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Please bring this lady. You will not find a place even in her family. Therefore, Satan, go. Go. Come out of her right now in the name of Jesus. This is not all. Please lift your hands again. The Lord still tells me there's more. One more time. We are going to shout the name. That name that is above every other name. And as you shout, now I see angels. I see angels. Now I see angels. Come on, shout Jesus. Oh, take it, take it. Jesus. Jesus. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. fire and I'm going to pray for you as I pray the fire of the Holy Spirit will set you free in the name of Jesus whose I am and who I serve every devil here right now go come out of them come out come out come out come out I set you free by the authority I break you free from covenants I break you free hallelujah please bring that lady No, you cannot stand the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hold on. Satan, your reign ends. Your reign ends. Leave I alone. Your reign ends. Leave I alone. Let her go. You are free. You are free. You are free. Hallelujah. Now look at me. The Lord is showing me the vision of someone in this place. I don't know why God is flowing like this, but please let's just follow him. Time is where we'll have to really hurry up. I'm seeing a substance on your hand whether it was given to you by your mother or someone in your family 
and you use it for protection who is that it was given to you please come out tonight God is setting men free please come out there is such a person in this place please make sure you are listening inside and outside who is that person please come out quickly except if it's one of these people lying down under the anointing there is such a person like that hallelujah please as soon as you identify that person let the person come out now i want to minister healing the healing power of god is here i sense the healing power of god now because of our time we may not call out cases individually hallelujah we'll just begin to release the life and the word of the lord hallelujah madam i was jump this is the woman right please come What is the problem? Mike, please. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've been having pains in my, my spinal cord. Down. I cannot walk well. You cannot walk well? I can't bend down. I can't lift anything from the ground. What led to it? It was just pain that started on my Just lips. pains? Yes. You believe God will set you free? Yes. That's why you came tonight. Yes. You have faith yes. that the Son of God yes. will set you free. Yes, yes He will. Amen. He will. Amen. What is this on your neck? They gave me from Shika. They gave you from yes. Shika yes. to aid you. Yes. You believe God is going to set you free? Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. The spirit of infant. I bring life to your body. I bring life to your back. Right now, the power of God flows through your body. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the power of God. New spine, new healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Madam, the power of God is on As fast as you can run, come back, run, run, run.
Absolutely. You couldn't do them. Come on, celebrate a miracle. Oh, 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 oh. command every growth, every tumor, every cancer. As I begin to speak, check yourself. If you find out you are healed, run out here right now. In the name of Jesus, cancer, go, go, growth, go. In the name of Jesus, begin to check yourself. Do what you couldn't do before. I command blindness, Blindness, go in the name of Jesus. Deafness, go. As I begin to pray, check yourself. Whatever is wrong with you, there are some ladies with menstrual issues. I command, let your flow resume now in the name of Jesus. My grain has just been healed. Please check yourself. As soon as you are healed, run out. We don't have all the time. My grain be healed. Now, check yourself, check yourself, check yourself. God is giving miracles. Peptic ulcer, peptic ulcer. Right now, I release the power of God. I command healing for peptic ulcer. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Check yourself. Go ahead and check yourself. Hallelujah. Now, there is a lady with breathing problems. You came here with breathing problems. You can't breathe well. Who are you? It's time for your miracle. Breathing problems. I hope those outside are hearing. Can they hear? Breathing problems. Who is that breathing problem? Sometimes you have to gasp for breath. Please quickly, let's save time. Hallelujah. Now everyone who is in need of any kind of miracle, any kind that you came here with, there's no time to mention all of them. You're going to shout, I receive. That's what the Lord tells me. Three times. The third time, celebrate God and begin to do what you couldn't do. If you find yourself healed, I'd like you to come. Maybe we can take one or two testimonies. Are you ready to shout, I receive? It's an act of faith. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and shout. Receive it. Receive it. I release miracles. I release miracles. Come out of her. In the name of Jesus, just lay your hands on your chest. Lay your hands on your chest. I command that devil, breathe in and out. Breathe in as hard as you can. As how you are healed right now. Breathe in. Breathe in as hard as you can. Hold on. Hold on. Now check yourself. What couldn't you do before? Okay. I find it very difficult to breathe. How about now? Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any issue? No. Are you serious? Yes, Breathe sir. in and out. Do what you couldn't do. Okay, let's try to jump small. Because when you jump, you any issue, yes, you are healed right now yes, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's someone I'm seeing one side of your ear you feel like water you don't hear very well with it who is the person one side of your ear quickly run which of the ears which of the ears lay your hands on the one that is good this is the one that is good you don't hear well with this one okay thou devil of deafness i hope you want somebody to hold this child Will you please can ushers that's why we need lady ushers if you are here you are not part of the ocean team sorry boy your mother will get back to you right now 
in the name of Jesus I command that devil of deafness I command your ears be opened now in the name of Jesus now cover this Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Perfection, the ear has opened. She couldn't hear with this ear. Stand up, madam. Which ear couldn't you hear with? This Are you one. hearing right now? Very well. Close it. Are you hearing? Tell us your testimony. Very well, sir. Okay. Close your ear. Before I couldn't hear with this ear. Go ahead, talk. I Let her talk. I cannot hear with this ear. Okay. When there's any phone call, I will have to put it on uh, loud voice before I will answer the call because of the pains of this, this, this side. Sometimes the right eye of my right side will be bringing out bringing water. water yes i see it the but now that devil that has but gone now i'm free i don't hear any pain in i think we should dance a little are you ready just just transpose unless miracles are still happening Worship, help me. I don't have an idea. Just celebrate miracles. Rekia, Rekia, Rekia. That's the name that I hear. Rekia. Please come quickly. Rekia. The Lord says I should prophesy a restoration for Rekia. That's what the Lord says I should tell you. This is a scripture the Lord gives me. He said, For many are the afflictions of the righteous. He said, But the Lord delivered him from them all. Hallelujah. And John is going to pray for you. I feel led that he should just pray and lay his hands and prophesy, call forth. The thing about the prophetic, it, it creates to call forth a restoration. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we demand the restoration Come for on, our this your hour. Release your hands. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the years that the enemy has stolen from you is restored now. In the name of Jesus, we uproot the planting of the enemy out of your stomach. Out of your stomach. Out of your stomach. Out of your stomach. In the name of Jesus. Even to your marriage, the Lord brings a restoration. The Lord wipes your tears in the name of Jesus. Go forth. God said he's healing you right now. He's healing you right now. He's healing you of high blood pressure. He's taking that growth out of your stomach in the name of Jesus. 
you are delivered this hour in Jesus name Hallelujah. amen Hallelujah. you are here you cannot turn your hand completely like this it's been a pain for a long time and you prayed you came to this meeting and you said God you must visit me you are a woman I'm seeing you tie something on your head you tie something on your head who is that come please run of the hands this hand what happened to it i don't know satan i command your power broken over this hand i release the anointing of the spirit what you feel is the fire of the holy ghost going around your hand let her be free right now right now right now is the power of god the anointing of the spirit going through you you are free madam look at me say in the name of jesus Jesus I am free I am free now wind your hand as wide as you can go ahead don't think about it go ahead total freedom in the name of Jesus hallelujah could you do this before no the Lord heals you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Hallelujah. For no man can enter a man's house and spoil the goods except he first binds the strong man. That's why I said, for if it is true that Satan is the only resistance, then nothing stops your healing. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Oh dear, we're out of time. Guys, there's really no room for the ministers to come in. But I'd like us to pray. Hallelujah. We really, really are out of time. This is past nine. This meeting tonight is supposed to change you. It's supposed to bring something out of your life. Are you listening to me? So what we're going to do right now, because we don't have time, is um, the ministers, in the few minutes that we have, they'll just move through the crowd so that the people they would have brought on, they can just minister to them while i just minister to everyone in mass is that correct is that okay so we'll be doing that right now please ministers just go as the lord directs you just walk through the crowd and minister to the people please so that we can save time hallelujah now all of you listen to me let's do it really really fast hallelujah now i want to release did you bring prayer requests no you did okay well we only do it as the spirit leads okay but quickly quickly ushers at the same time we are doing all of this at the same time you are submitting your prayer request if you don't have any right one quickly and concentrate while the ministers please walk through the crowd by the spirit and just minister we have to do this real fast we took out time to teach the word you have four ladies in your family no one is married it's part of your request run out here quickly four ladies no one is married four ladies inside and outside please make sure you are listening four ladies no one is married and even you right now you are not married you have been praying for a run out you came here for god to give you a miracle you believe that you believe god gives you a miracle i want you to know that god will terminate everything that looks like delay any other person please come quickly hallelujah the lord himself do you understand there is the fragrance of the spirit of God that comes upon you the Bible says Isaac speaking said the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed hallelujah I'm going to pray for you right now I like you to believe by the faith of the Son of God that God himself is going to terminate you will be very surprised it will look like magic It's the power of God are you listening to me if you go to a native doctor in where did they, where are the people in Zaria where did they reside in Zaria city and ask him let me tell you he will do some incantations for you and you'll find out that you are married but god himself is mightier than any man are you listening to me thank you father lift up your hands all of you in front lord i command that manifestation of satan over your family to be gone i see a lot of oppression in your family come please i need a lady i need a lady any come come to the front please just lay your hands on her stomach that's what i need just lift your hands you just lift your hands in the name of jesus be free from that wickedness in your family be free now 
by the power of the Holy Spirit I set you free help me in the name of Jesus Christ be free now by the power of the Holy Spirit be free for your family right now we command supernatural marriages by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus supernatural marriages by the power of the Holy Spirit supernatural marriages for everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah please write it quickly because we want to do an impartation now and there's still an announcement please don't be quick to go there is a very important announcement we must communicate hallelujah write your prayer request quickly we want to do an impartation so that you don't fall on someone writing this I don't know how hungry you are for more of the anointing of the spirit are you listening to me I don't know how hungry you are the ministers are ministering to pastor Sam the ministers are ministering to people there's no time oh okay you receive it too oh you received the anointing and you were touching her to do it for her okay go ahead pray for her in the name of Jesus we declare the power of the Holy Spirit through you to her in the name of Jesus healing and perfection and may that anointing not leave you from today look at me I'm prophesying to you any lady you lay hands on you will release supernatural marriages and restoration if you believe that lift your hands because you have stood in the ushering department I command that this dimension of impartation comes upon your life you will see it happen and you'll be surprised in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah worshipers are we ready to pray worshipers I think you should receive something to hold your hands together hallelujah worship team let's start with you an anointing and an impartation upon you hallelujah for greater grace for greater dimension hallelujah I'm just going to walk there is an angel I see standing close to me that brings the anointing of the Holy Spirit for you people hallelujah I'm just going to walk and stretch my hands and I see the power of God I see Steve strings the Lord tells me you are stepping into a strange order a strange order hallelujah worship people are you ready please just lift your hands as I move in the name of Jesus let that anointing flow to you let it flow to you let it flow to you every one of you let it flow to you Steve let it flow to you Mike let it flow Sheyi Tosin go ahead Yinka everyone I release it receive it now now by the power of the Holy Ghost receive it now an impartation you begin to sing like angels by the power of the Holy Spirit there is an activation upon you in the name of Jesus we release this anointing upon the koinonia worship team you begin to function in an order of power your worship begins to take the house to a new level of grace a new level of power every worshiper in the crowd this anointing touches you right now everyone please leave, put your hands down if you are not singing every worshiper now I release that anointing if you are a worshiper here lift your hands let that anointing flow right now to every worshiper i command new songs come out of your spirit man come out of your spirit man new songs everyone in the ministry of worship i stir it up this fire this anointing receive it receive it receive it like a mighty rushing wind inside and outside Parekete a new order of worshipers a new order of spiritual people outside i see the anointing of god flowing on some of you outside outside through the window i stretch my hands let the anointing hit every worshiper now 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 let new songs arise let new songs a new pattern of worship will be introduced to the body of christ a new pattern heavenly songs 
for the instrumentalist. You will no longer pray instruments. You will be worshippers upon the mistral. Go ahead, Steve, and play. Just the, just the guitar. Go ahead and flow. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. Mass impartations. Lift your hands. I'm going to release the fire of God. An apostolic fire. A prophetic fire. A healing anointing. Get ready. Lift up your hands. Now. Receive it. Receive it. Take it in the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Take it. Take it. Lift your hands. Everyone. Take it. But they can take it of you. Let both shop break it. Let Fire upon your spirit. Reke for Rotopaya. Mam break it today. The spirit of prophecy. Receive it. Receive it. The prophetic spirit. The prophetic anointing. Receive it. The prophetic anointing. After the count of three, the spirit of prayer and supplication will fall upon the house. Prayer lives will be activated right now. At the count of three, one, two, intercessors, arise, 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 receive the quickening of the spirit. Receive quickening upon your spirit man. Great intercessors, men of prayer, women of prayer, men of prayer, women of prayer, men of prayer, women of prayer, men of prayer. Women of prayer, let the fountains be broken from your spirit. Let the fountains be broken. Hallelujah. Sorry, we are taking time. We'll soon be out of here. I want to release the healing anointing. Many of you will step into a strange order of healing that will make you afraid if god be god tonight then it comes upon you lift your hands as high as it can get for it will come upon many including your little children i see let the healing anointing flow 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 Flow, flow, flow. Let no one be left. Let the healing power. Rekete tete, rekete te pokoya, reparike te, repande kodoso, rapariaka, reketo soso, reparia, apataka tosekes, barike te, rondoso super, riketi arata. Baria Katan and Totoso Koto. Let it flow outside. I stretch my hands to you. Receive it outside. Receive it. The healing anointing outside. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. I want to pray over your finances. 
make sure you stand in for your loved ones enough of struggling is not by power isaiah 45 verse 3 and i will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places deuteronomy 8 18 but thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he that giveth thee the power the anointing there is the ability there is an anointing to prosper lift your hands everybody please receive it please please we need it i always do this we need a prosperous generation standing for your loved ones with this anointing let every debt i don't care how much for you and your family let every debt be cancelled receive it strong i pray for you receive it strong for the lord gave it to me the lord gave it to me and tonight for the love i have for you i declare receive it take it take it take it take it receive it let it flow prosperity in your business favor the Esther anointing the Esther anointing I, re I release it with all my heart I release it I release it strange order of wealth of favor of prosperity receive it receive it those of you standing in for your loved ones those of you standing in for your loved ones families if your family has suffered financially and you think enough is enough lift your hands lift your hands if you think your family has struggled hear me i don't care what your father is doing or what your mother is doing for it is the lord that can empower a man and tonight if i be a servant of god if i be sent by the anointing of the spirit out of the virtue that he has put i invoke it from the heavens receive it now receive it now receive it now receive it receive it receive it receive it your families will enter a strange order of favor a strange order of prosperity even if you are the only one sponsoring yourself from today stop struggling move forward i give you a prophetic push into the next level of kingdom wealth and prosperity hallelujah everything that represents a delay in your life whether marriage whether relationship whether job you are on a contract they are supposed to sign it they have not signed it right now under this anointing i command every closed door be open in the name of jesus hallelujah from tonight i declare that you will step into a level of favor the bible says and jesus grew in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and with men a strange order of favor where strangers including your enemies will work to bless you receive it receive it 
Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. All of you who are workers here, you have a job. All of you who are workers, it's time for the people around you to know that the Lord has honored you. Listen, we'll start with those who are lecturers. If you're a student here and your father is a lecturer or your mother, you can stand in for them. We want, I don't care what the system is from the Senate. We want to legislate certain things here by the prophetic order of God's spirit. Lift your hands. You're a lecturer or you're standing in for a lecturer. Enough is enough that anyone that has been due for promotion and has been delayed by the wickedness of men. The Bible says in Job 5, he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men. For there is a, a God that can set a man down and lift another man up right now. Under this anointing of the spirit. Promotion comes neither from the east, nor the south, nor the west. I command my father and my king. Supernatural promotion upon every lecturer. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. That day, that day that conspire against you, hear me, that day that conspire against you will find themselves working for your good. I command it in the name of Jesus. I command it in the name of Jesus. Please, where is Stanley, Bishop? The Lord brings a new degree of honor for you. No, I want to pray for you first. The Lord brings for you a new degree and a new order of honor. The Lord says, I should tell you, for the times of faithfulness have been measured. And your faithfulness is speaking. A strange order of honor is what the Lord brings. And I pray in the name of Jesus, let this strange anointing come upon you and mantle you to bring you honor beyond your imagination. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to round up quickly. Please, there is an important announcement we are going to communicate right now. Hallelujah. You are here, you are not born again. You have not given your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. You have not given your heart to the Lord in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I pray right now, listen to me, inside and outside, you are here and you are not born again. We love you. The Lord does not condemn you. It's time for you to come home and start a new life with the Lord. Inside and outside. Or you have given your heart to the Lord. But you have found yourself derailing from the path of the Spirit. Right now in the name of Jesus. I encourage you. Please let's all rise before we sit down. Let's all rise. Everyone come out quickly and stand. Everyone who belongs in that category. You want to give your heart to the Lord. Or you are making a commitment please appreciate them as they come appreciate them leave your seat inside and outside this is the greatest miracle appreciate them the lord is talking to you you are welcome you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome welcome them we welcome you home you're welcome home you're welcome home no man condemns you God is still speaking to some other people. You are welcome. We will wait for you. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so delighted in my heart for all of you who have come out to indicate an interest to love God and to walk in his ways. The Bible says, all who draw nigh to him, he will in no wise cast away. And I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Lord himself will bring you into a new experience. This is the greatest testimony you will ever have in your life. That you made a decision for Jesus Christ. Is the pivot on which everything in your Christian life and experience will revolve around. So lift your hands after me as we pray this prayer. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare that I'm born again 
I denounce sin and Satan. I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am one with Christ. I partake of the blessings of redemption. There's power to be called a child of God. The hand of God is upon me. Holy Spirit, come and find abode in me. Make a vessel and a treasure out of me. I declare that I'm born again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, preserve these ones. You have brought them by your spirit. Preserve them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you teach them the principles of the kingdom and make generals out of them. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Appreciate them. This is the greatest decision you have ever made. Hold on, hold on. Please, I'd like you to just follow the ushers one moment. They'll just have your names and your contact details and we'll reach you. You'll do that very quickly. Hallelujah. Now, Stanley, please, there is a project that we are going to begin. Please, everybody listen. This is very important. Just a few minutes. I know we've taken our time. I'm really sorry. But how many of you think it's worth it? Hallelujah. Okay, so just listen to Stanley. He's going to be passing a very important announcement. Please sit down inside and outside. We'll soon be out. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.